It's Sunday, May 19th, and it's that time of year again. The 2024 Atlantic hurricane season is upon us. We'll officially start on June 1st, but history shows that storms can and do form in the month of May. This is the current satellite picture showing not much going on out there in the tropical Atlantic right now, but this video is going to discuss the overall outlook for this hurricane season, what we can expect and what we think we know and what we can't really be sure of at this time of year. And I'll spend a few minutes at the end talking about when we might expect the season to actually kick off with our first storm. This is the current sea surface temperature anomaly map showing where the ocean surface water is warmer than normal in orange and red and colder than normal in blue. And a couple of big features stand out at this time of year. Uh, for the last 12 months, uh, at least the last year, we've had an El Nino going on in the Pacific, but it is now reversing and we see a cold tongue of water beginning to upwell in the eastern and central Atlantic. This is expected to grow and spread westward over the coming months, enveloping the equatorial Pacific in a cold tongue of water. At the same time, we have very warm water in the tropical Atlantic, rarely seen, if ever, water warmer than this. And these two parameters together tell us a lot about the overall hurricane activity level in the upcoming summer and fall. Uh, there's not a lot we can know in detail about a hurricane season months ahead of time, but when we have big oceanic signals like this, they tend to persist for many months and the ocean is generally slow to change relative to the atmosphere. So we kind of lean on the ocean to give us a clue about how the overall atmospheric pattern will set up in the coming months. If we look at the NMME multi-model ensemble forecast for the August, September, October period, which is when the Atlantic hurricane season is at its peak, we see that these general oceanic features are expected to persist. And we see again that that La Nina pattern amplifies and grows big blue tongue. And we also have cool water across the subtropical Eastern Pacific associated with a negative sign of the Pacific Meridional mode, which means that there's much less warm water in general over the Eastern Pacific to support tropical storms there. But in the Atlantic, we have a tongue of warmer than normal water over the tropical latitudes of the Atlantic. And this is a classic sign that conditions will favor extra thunderstorm activity in the Atlantic, which is generally favorable for cyclogenesis. And conversely, in the Pacific, less convection is favored when the water is colder, which makes sense. It's important to also understand how this modulates the overall atmospheric pattern. Not only do cold water and warm water change the amount of convection that happens during the hurricane season, that convection also then modifies the overall atmospheric flow in the Pacific and the Atlantic. We can see an example of this in the CFS forecast for the same time period during the peak of the hurricane season, August to October. This plot shows the east-west component of the wind flow and the anomaly relative to average. So on this plot, orange colors indicate more westerly flow than average. In the Atlantic, what this really means is we typically have trade winds out of the east and northeast. Uh, this orange color basically means weaker trade winds. So westerly anomalies, weaker trade wind flow. In the Pacific, we have the opposite with purple colors showing easterly anomalies. So the trade winds are actually stronger than normal, which is part of the reason why we get upwelling cold water during La Nina uh, in this pattern. Now, what's really interesting is when we pair this plot up with the upper atmospheric flow. So going up to 40,000 feet at 200 millibars, we see the opposite colors occur. So in the Atlantic, we now see purple where we previously saw orange that indicates anomalous easterlies aloft. Now, typically over the Atlantic, there's a subtropical jet going across. And so there's typically an average westerly wind. These purples mean that that westerly wind is weaker than usual. So we have weaker trade winds underneath weaker westerly flow aloft. When you pair those two together, you have westerly anomalies on the bottom and then above them, easterly anomalies on top. So that counters the average vertical shear that is typically present in the Atlantic during the hurricane season. We typically have westerlies aloft, trade winds on the bottom, and that's a westerly shear. But when we have a warm Atlantic and a La Nina, that shear is reduced through upper level easterlies aloft and lower level westerlies near the surface. And so this pattern in general makes the tropical Atlantic more favorable than it usually is for tropical cyclone development. And so that paired with favorable conditions for thunderstorms really makes the basin light up compared to years where these conditions are not there. 
So we have this oceanic forecast for the hurricane season, and what we can do is compare this against the ocean pattern that's typically associated with active hurricane seasons. One way we can look at this is by correlating sea surface temperature with hurricane season activity. So on this plot, orange colors show where warm water is associated with a strong Atlantic hurricane season, and blue colors indicate where colder water is associated with an active season. And so you'll see immediately that the largest anomalies on the plot are these dark oranges over the tropical Atlantic, showing that a warm tropical Atlantic, warm water there favors an active hurricane season. Okay, makes perfect sense. And we also see a weaker but still opposite signal in the Pacific. This indicates that cool water or a La Nina-like pattern over the equatorial Pacific is associated with an Atlantic hurricane season. Again, no surprise, and these do align with what we have right now, cool in the central equatorial Pacific and warm over the tropical Atlantic. So in general, we are seeing the very pattern that typically favors an Atlantic hurricane season, and that's forecast to persist all summer. Now, if we're talking about the odds of landfalls, and for now I'm gonna use the United States as a proxy, the Caribbean typically gets hit a lot when the US gets hit a lot, but looking at U.S. hurricane landfalls, we can do the same analysis and see where warm water is associated with a lot of hurricane landfalls during the year. And you'll see that again, a warm tropical Atlantic is associated with more hurricane hits, but it is a weaker signal than for overall season activity where you see much darker oranges. That's a stronger relationship than for the number of landfalls. And what this tells you is that the ocean can give us a pretty good idea of whether there will be a lot of storms in the Atlantic, but that doesn't necessarily mean that there are going to be a lot of hits on the U.S. landmass. That relationship is weaker. If we expand to not just hurricanes, but all tropical storms and hurricanes, we see that the strongest signal is actually this La Nina pattern in the Pacific, where if we have cold water here, we typically get more total storm hits on the continental U.S. And this kind of makes sense because during the La Nina, you actually tend to have a steering pattern that favors landfalls more. This map here shows the association between El Nino and the mid-level steering flow from west to east. So the orange colors here indicate a stronger subtropical jet from west to east. And during El Nino, this typically deflects storms away from the U.S. more because they run into this more westerly flow on average. During a La Nina, such as we have or will have during this hurricane season, you would flip these colors. So during La Nina, you typically have more easterly component of the steering flow, perhaps due to stronger ridging over the Western Atlantic or the Southeastern US, and that can tend to direct storms more towards the Caribbean and US on average. So a La Nina favoring landfalls kind of makes sense. And again, unfortunately, we do have that pattern this summer. However, again, this doesn't guarantee that we're going to have a lot of landfalls. The relationship is much weaker for total hurricane hits than it is for overall activity. So we can pretty much guarantee that we're going to have an active season or as close to a guarantee as you can make a few months in advance. But we can't be so sure about how many landfalls there will be. Often hurricane landfalls come down to chance. What is the steering flow during the particular week that a particular storm forms? That determines whether it ultimately hits land or goes out to sea. And we are not yet, in this state of the science, able to predict that with great accuracy. But in general, an active season does mean a slightly larger chance of more landfalls. So things aren't looking great this year, uh, but that doesn't guarantee there will be a lot. And let's hope there aren't. Now we can also get an objective opinion on the upcoming hurricane season by looking at some numerical model guidance for the next few months. This is the ECMWF seasonal model, probably one of the best in the world. And this is a time series of its hurricane season activity forecasts for the Atlantic for the last 30 years from 1992 until current year. This blue line is the model forecast for ACE value or overall cyclone activity. And the red line is the observed activity level. And so over time, you can see that it's not a perfect model and there is some discrepancy between the red and the blue lines, but it is one of the best models we have. And the current year's forecast is over here on the right hand side, showing a forecast for more than double the climatological value of ACE or overall cyclone activity. And this is also the highest forecast that the model has ever issued. 
Now again, this is not a perfect model and it does get some years wrong, but to see this kind of forecast really underscores the impact of the oceanic pattern that we are set up for and how much it supports an active hurricane season. And so for this reason, almost every seasonal forecast you see come out this year, whether it's from NOAA or from other entities like Colorado State University, are going to show a very active year, much higher than normal, because it's just really hard to make a forecast that's any different than that based on the conditions that we're currently observing. So overall, we know the hurricane season is likely to be active. We can't guarantee the number of landfalls, but in any given year, it only takes one storm that happens to come your way due to whatever steering mechanisms are in place for that particular week when the storm forms. And so it's important to always be ready and have a plan ready to go. This is a great time of year to start planning ahead and making sure you're ready to respond if a storm comes your way. Ready.gov slash hurricanes is a great place to find resources on how to plan and find information about your locale, your evacuation routes, your susceptibility to flooding and storm surge, etc., and how to make a plan. And we have to do this even where I live in Hawaii, so we'll be getting ready for the Central Pacific hurricane season out here as well, and I hope you do the same if you live in the Atlantic area. Now briefly I'm going to talk about when we might expect the season to actually kick off. Uh, I'm actually going to start here with the ECMWF MJO forecast for the next month, you know, typically at the beginning of the year, May, June, conditions aren't optimal in the Atlantic yet. They don't really get optimal until August. And so in the early season, it's really dependent often on what we call equatorial waves in order to drive intraseasonal variability and certain weeks might be more favorable than others. And so often we're looking for areas of ascending motion associated with the MJO or a Kelvin wave to propagate eastward across the globe and move over the Atlantic area. On this particular plot, this is showing time going downward on the forecast axis, and then we're looking at longitude on the x-axis, and these green colors indicate essentially upward motion and orange colors sinking motion. The right-hand side of the plot is over the Atlantic. So right now, as of the current analysis time, right on this black line, we're having sinking over the Atlantic, rising over the Pacific, and there's a developing MJO event kind of over the Indian Ocean where the maximum in this rising motion is and this is expected to generally propagate eastward slowly over the coming weeks and this signal will cross the Pacific and ultimately land in the Atlantic according to the model sometime in the second or maybe third week of June and that will probably enhance conditions and make them more conducive for tropical cyclone formation. So if we were looking for a particular week when the season might kick off in earnest the first opportunity is probably mid-June based on current model forecasts, but that doesn't guarantee we can't have a storm form due to some other mechanism before that. For example, even in the GFS forecast right now, there could be a chance at a subtropical storm during the midpoint of next week. This is the upper level flow from the GFS showing an upper level trough digging deep into the Caribbean, and it causes the development of a surface low south of Haiti, and this moves up uh, into the western Atlantic and ends up interacting intimately with this upper level trough and if it gets stacked underneath a couple of days after that it's possible that this could become subtropical in nature you may see that on some of the national hurricane center outlooks in a few days here but if we look at the the moisture pattern you know what this is really going to be is a big rain event for the greater antilles so hispaniola and puerto rico and surrounding islands may have some flooding threats from this midweek, regardless of, of what this is, whether it's tropical or non-tropical. And then you can see that even when it gets out here south of Bermuda, it's pretty asymmetric with moisture on one side, but dry air punching in on the other. So this is very unlikely at this point to be a bona fide tropical system, but it's possible you'll see mention of some subtropical possibilities in a few days. But for now, all is quiet in the tropical Atlantic. Again, the overall outlook for the season is that it should be pretty active. That doesn't guarantee that there will be a lot of hurricane hits, and let's hope there aren't. Uh, but please be prepared and have a response plan ready to go just in case a storm comes your way this year. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.